right now, Lord God, for what you have done for us through Jesus Christ, Father. Thank you, God, as I go forth to, to explain your word and to teach your word, oh God. Open up the eyes of our understanding. Open that we might behold great and wonderful things out of your word. Speak to our minds and speak to our hearts in Jesus' name. We pray, amen. So what I want to talk to you a little bit about is to about understanding your salvation. And that was our Bible study lesson for the last two weeks, and I hope you guys done that. But a lot of times, if we don't get an understanding of what happened to us when we received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, the enemy can come and steal your salvation. He can come and, 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 and if you make a wrong move or uh, make a mistake, he can come and tell you that you're not even saved. You don't, got, you don't have anything, you know? And that's the way we used to think that when somebody uh, received the Lord as their Savior, and then if we saw them doing something that we thought saved folk ought not to do, then we said, oh, I thought they were saved. They ain't saved. And see, that's the way we used to think because we didn't have a good understanding of what happened to us when we received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. You know, it ain't about a feeling. You hear somebody say, uh, when I got saved, you know, my, what they say about my feet? Look new and my hand did too. You know. Uh -uh. And it's not about a feeling. Because, you know, I don't feel saved every day. It ain't about a feeling. You ain't, you know, we got to go by what the word says. We got to take God at his word. And so he told us in Romans 10, 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's what he said in his word. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then uh, verse 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So now, once we did that, we were saved. We, it, we, we received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We were saved. You, we believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. He, if he said, if you believe that, confess him as your Lord and Savior, you'll be saved. That's a transaction that happened. It was not about a feeling. You believe his word. So then you, you're saved. You know what I'm saying? You were saved the very moment, a minute, that you committed your life to God. Now, once he did that, here's what you got to believe. That we're in good hands. You know. And I think it was the verse, uh, John 10 and 28, 29 says, I give unto them eternal life. Now, we got eternal life. Every one of you in here, I know you're going to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You got eternal life living in you right now whether you feel like it or not. Because why? Because it's what the word says. He said, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Can't nobody pluck us out of Jesus' hand? And then he said, my father which gave them to me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. So now once we committed our life to Jesus Christ, 
We have eternal life in us right now. And can't nobody, no devil in hell can take us out of his hand. The only way you can get out of his hand is you walk away yourself. You said, no, I ain't having nothing to do with this Jesus stuff. I'm going over to Muslims or whatever other stuff they got going on out there, you know? That's the only way you walk out yourself. But long as you stay committed, long as you say Jesus Christ is my Lord, then ain't nobody going to pluck you out of his hand. The devil can't pluck you out of his hand. So what the devil will try to do is to come and tell you that you ain't saved because you did X, Y, Z. I don't care how long we live, we're not going to cross every T and dot every I. Do you hear what I'm saying up here? We're not going to do it. And see, uh, now the longer you've been in the Word, now you've been say 50 years, I'm expecting to see some of them T's cross. <laughs> some of them eyes dotted, you know what I'm saying? Because you don't been with them long enough and get in that Word and know. But when, you, when you're a baby in Christ, you just get saved, you know, you might still mess up. But you got to realize that you're saved. You, Jesus got you. And, the, and if you keep your, if you stay committed to him, he'll keep you. And, and see, whenever, even when we're not faithful, he's still faithful. Do you hear what I'm saying? He's still faithful to keep you going. Speak to you, talk to you. And so the thing that we got to do is realize what happened to us when we received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior? What happened is we went through a complete inner transformation. Our spirits, because you know we are three-part being, right? We are spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a body. What got born again was our spirit. Because we used to have the spirit of the devil in us. Now once you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the spirit of Christ came into you. So that's why they call it born again. You're born again now. You're able to hear from God now. You're not separated from God now. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and verse 18 says, Therefore, if any man, boy, woman, or girl, be in who? Christ. When you receive Jesus Christ, you were put in Christ. He is a new creature. And one, one translation said, you are a new species of being. The old things are passed away. What old thing passed away? Your old sin nature. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are God who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. God loves us so much. While, the Bible says while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He loves us. You know, and that's why, you know, when I look at people, I look at human beings, I don't care in the mess. I see a person that God loves. You know, even in that mess, there's still God's child or either God's creation. You hear what I'm saying? Now, you, another thing that you got to know, your body and your soul didn't change when you were born again. Your body, if you were fat when you got saved, you're going to be still fat after you get saved. Your body 
and your soul didn't change when you were born again. Just the spirit. So now your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions still the same. Your body going to still be the same. Your mind, you're going to still think the same way. The habits you had before you got saved, some of them habits going to still be on you. A lot of times, you know, when uh, people get saved, some of them things will drop off of them, but a lot of times, a lot of them don't. You know, any kind of habits you had, it's a habit. They just don't jump off of you all of a sudden like that. Some people do, and, but everybody, everybody's different. Do you hear what I'm saying? So once you realize that your body and your soul didn't change, that transformation, transfer, uh, transformation of your body and soul won't become complete until you go to be with Jesus. See, the, the change occurred in your born-again spirit. Your spirit totally changed at salvation. Your spirit. We got to think about our spirit. And we, we never seen our spirits. I've never seen your spirit. You've never seen my spirit. But the Bible says that we are spirit beings, right? So we got all we got to go by is what the word tells us who we are. That's why it's so important that you read the Bible. Once you get saved, you need, we need to read the word so we can know what happened to us. Who is God? What is God like? He'll tell you right there in the word. And you have to, you have to, in order to get your mind renewed, we got to get, we got to get in some word. Because like the Bible says, just like a newborn babe, desire the myth of the word I'm asking God to give us a desire for his word because once you got born again just like a, a newborn baby you have a newborn baby you got to give that baby some milk right because if you don't give that baby any milk that baby going to eventually die if you don't feed that baby some milk that baby is not going to grow properly so the same thing with us as being born again. The word of God is food for our spirit man. So we got to take in that word, just like I'm giving you word now. That's feeding your spirit man. So that your spirit man can be stronger. Because if your spirit man is weak, then you're going to follow the dictates of your flesh. Because, see, in your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions, you still got the actions of what you did all your life in your soulless area. So that's what you operate out of your soulless area. Just like you learn how to ride a bicycle or drive a car, right? When you did that, that got into your subconscious. That got into your subconscious brain. So now, you did that so long that you can get out there and get in the car. You don't even think about it. You just get in the car, drive. Some of y'all be eating, trying to eat, and text and do everything. <laughs> because that's in you. So now the same thing about whenever you get saved, Born again, if you don't get in some word here, get some word in here, you're going to still be out there doing the same thing you did for me. That's say, Cussing people out. And see, but, but see, once you get in this word, you know, if you had a bad habit, after a while you keep getting in this word and reading this word and hearing this word teach and talk, you're going to say, I need to stop. I need to stop this right here. Whatever this right here is, it's going to come to you. I need to, mm -mm, I need to stop this right here. I, yeah, no. And then you, you realize, God, you need to help me. It's like smoking. 
I hear some people say, you know, they like to smoke. You know? But uh, what smoking can do to you, it ain't a word anywhere where, you know, you don't go to hell and you smoke. But it'll mess your body up. You see what I'm saying? It'll mess your body up. They already put on this, the package the hazards of smoking, right? Or anything that you do excessively, it can mess your body up. So you gonna still, now once he closed me out, I wanna ask you some questions. So now, the change occurred in your born again spirit. Your spirit totally changed that salvation. Your spirit was instantly and completely transformed. That's what the word of God says. At this very, everything you will ever need in the Christian life is already present in its entirety in your spirit. That's what the Bible says. That's what the word says. Now, when you make a mistake or feel discouraged, you got to just remember, God can't deny himself because he always keeps his word. Oh, in other words, what it's saying right here is when you mess up, God's still faithful. He's gonna still be faithful to you. And if that and if the spirit of God, the living God lives on the inside of you, you know you you know you messed up. And then you got to repent. Nah. I messed up. Help me. Because and in, in uh, I'm doing a study now on angels. I'm gonna teach that one uh, one more. But angels, all of us have angels. Big angels. I know you got at least one that watches over you. You know. And so your angels want to work for you. God put that, you give your an angel so he can work for you. But the one thing about the angel, he's not gonna, he not gonna work for you if you ain't got your mouth right. I mean, you talking all kind of smack and this and that and the other, how can the angel help you? Cause he can't, he can't run out there and help you. But now they, they, they do because we've been in accidents and God spared our lives. Some accidents people get in, they should have died. And I just attribute that to the angel of God. You see? So just like, I think well, last year, me and Bronson were prone to accidents. Yeah. So the law. But the angels, we got angels. And so, when you make a mistake, or you feel discouraged, you're talking about feeling some kind of discouraged. I've been, enemy been attacking my mind. It's trying to discourage me. I mean, this year right here, you guys don't know it, but I've been fighting some spiritual battles this, this coming in this year right here. I thank God that, you know, he brings me out of them. He brings me out of them. But I'm on, like I was saying in Bronx this morning, the spiritual realm is real. Do you hear what I'm saying? The spiritual realm, you know, I don't see it. I'm not going around looking at a devil behind every tree, but the spirit realm is real. Because who do we have in that spirit realm? We got God, we got Jesus, we got the angels, then we got Satan out there in that spiritual realm. Then we got all his demons. And his demons are, are, are trying to come against us. And that battlefield a lot of times be in the mind. In that mind. He'll talk to your mind, tell you you'll never be nothing. You'll never have this. This vision will never come to pass. You'll be broke all your, your life. You, he'll bombard you with that with that, those thoughts. 
And see, if you don't have enough word in you and don't know how to go to that word and believe and claim what God has for you, what he said he's done for you, sometimes you might miss it. You see? Because he's going he to battle that mind. But that's why we got to get knowledge. Understanding what happened to us. Understanding what happened to us whenever we got born again. And that's why it's one thing, you can't, you can't go around here and say who's saved and who's not saved. I done learned that. You can't go around here and, oh, talk about folk that ain't saved. I know they ain't saved. How do you know? All we got to do is try to work on our own soul, soul salvation. Because you can get born again and still do that same thing you were doing before you got born again. Why? Because you haven't got your mind renewed. You don't stay enough word to get your mind renewed. And then you can get, you can look at it like y'all young folk won't get in some word, but you'll get, look at all these podcasts and all these conspiracy theories. <laughs> social media but God, you, you got a God that owns everything that knows everything all wisdom belongs to him can show you how to be a success can show you how to increase his way can show you how to get this or that. And we won't even go to him and, and ask him to lead us and guide us into this. See, the, the devil don't want us to tap into everything God wants for us. He couldn't keep you from getting saved, but he can sure keep you from learning anything about God. You know what I'm saying? You get you you receive him. Yes, Jesus is my Lord. But if you don't know in the word what he promised, you just like you can walk around carnal, be a calm Christian. Be moved by what you feel, see, and hear. That's calm. But the just shall walk by faith and not by sight. I want to give you one more point, and then I am going to cut off. Uh, see, uh, one thing you got to know, knowledge from God's word helps you comprehend what took place in your life at salvation. Knowing and following him will bring you unspeakable joy. See, salvation just isn't about just going to heaven when you die. God wants you to start experiencing your salvation benefits immediately down here on earth. But this requires knowledge from his word. As you understand and act on that knowledge, you will experience the benefits of your salvation.